clock at the DK kitchen. And yeah, so let's go. Big round of applause for the very funny Ruben Geiser! Hi, everybody. Uh, as you can tell, I am not one of the pimps tonight. <laughs> um, thank you for the warm welcome from, from our student. You did get the time because I just didn't have anything when the show started so far. But, yeah. Who cares? Yes, I am uh, I'm not, one of the, not one of the pimps tonight, and I'm probably also not uh, the first person that comes to mind when you think of who should be opening a show called Pimprov. <laughs> but uh, I, I assure you, I. Uh, I'm here because I'm, I, I'm fulfilling a need for uh, exactly the right type of person to open for a show called Kent Rob. And uh, we got some other good openers tonight, such as Bob Newhart's and uh, a <laughs> Trivago guy, and a uh, talking flip flop with a sock in it. I'm also up here tonight. No, I, I am kidding. I am kidding. Um, yes, uh, no, it's very nice, very nice that they invited me to open this show to be the, uh, the only. The only uh, opener here. Uh, <laughs> very kind of them. Very kind of them. But really, if you, if you think about it, I, I, I do make sense. I, I do make sense as the appropriate person on the show because I know the show is about uh, broad stereotypes of pimps and things of that nature. And for every buggy bear, you got your Starsky and Hutch. And Starsky, the guy that Starsky has the same last name as me. So, that's, uh, that's my last attempt to justify why I'm opening for this show. <laughs> thank you very much, thank you very much. I do love doing comedy in Oak Park, uh, not just because I live here, and because all I had to do was walk down the street. And also, I'm, I'm very happy to be here, not just because of the fact that I was going to come here anyway, and now I have to pay for admission. <laughs> very happy to be here doing comedy in, jo in, in Oak Park, because all of you, I think, more than anyone else, can relate to any jokes I have about cicadas. How many people here live in Oak Park? Okay, how many people have a visceral reaction when I say cicadas? Okay, that's what I was hoping for. That's what I was definitely hoping for. I hope you can all relate to it because I'm warning you now, from here on out, for the rest of the set, it's gonna be about the cicadas. I got many cicada jokes. There's good cicada jokes, but there's no cicada jokes. So, <laughs> it is that time of the year that's coming up. Uh, it's not here yet, but the cicadas, we're going to be in the throes of that shit in a few few weeks. At least I think so. I've only lived here through the cicada season one year. I don't know if it's always bad, but last year it was terrible. Um, I can't do these jokes because this is not a damn problem we got to deal with where I come from in, in Wisconsin. Or, or I can't even do these jokes in Chicago. I don't think cicadas are as big a problem there as they are here. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a uh, carpet bag who moved here, but when I moved here, I, I thought the cicadas. I heard cicadas. I did not register them as cicadas, and I thought that it was maybe like a like a like a rip in like another realm where the screaming uh, souls of the eternal damned were shrieking at me. But no, it is the cicadas, and they are going to be here for well the next three months, right? And then they die. So that's cool, but um, you know, it's uh, it's not that I hate cicadas. I don't hate cicadas. I'm a loving man. I love all animals except kangaroos, and uh, I don't hate cicadas. I, believe me, I got a tiny place in my heart for the cicadas, even though they do that horrible shrieking, loud screaming sounding noise. They do this one thing that I really appreciate. I really appreciate when they do this. They do this every year, and they, they die. They die. <laughs> and I feel great gratitude for them for dying. For, for you and for me, they die. And every time I see that Takeda in October, I go, thank you. Uh, I'm not being alive anymore. Thank you for your service. <laughs> I, I used to get excited for October because um, of Halloween, but now I get excited for October because the Takeda's die. <laughs> but this is the rhythm and flow of life. Cicadas coming, dying, washing for feet. But it's just so upsetting to me. Think about what a life that is for a cicada. Right? They are born out of this stupid, slimy, kid out of hay, looks like a gross piece of rice. They're hatched, and then they go underground for seven years. I used to think that when cicadas were underground, that they were sleeping. Wrong. Wrong. That's a misconception. I realized recently that they are not sleeping for seven years. 
They are hatched, and then for seven years underground, they're just fucking around. They're awake for that whole time. <laughs> Did you know that? They're not asleep. They are just fucking around for seven years. All around us right now, if you, if, all, all beneath us, not around us, underneath us right now, there are cicadas, generations of cicadas just fucking around, waiting to emerge from the soil, and then fuck, and then die. <laughs> That's basically all their life is. What a sad life that is. I can't imagine. <laughs> see, see, they cicadas. They spend, they spend most of their lives underground doing some sort of a menial task that nobody really cares about, and then they emerge, and then either they reproduce or they don't, and then they die. <laughs> so I guess they're more relatable than, than I realized they were, <laughs> unfortunately. But just again, I mean, think about what they do every every year. We're gonna do this for three months. They they emerge. They scream, they just they get out and they go, ah! And they try to draw the most attention to themselves so they can mate. Imagine a group of people congregating and making as much noise as they can to find a potential mate to fuck. <laughs> okay, well, actually, if you've been to Wrigleyville, <laughs> John Barley form, it's, that's kind of what they do there. So that's also pretty relatable. These things in general. <laughs> The more I think about it, I'm very relatable. Did you know there are thousands and thousands of types of cicadas? There are thousands and thousands of them. And they all do the same thing every year. They come up, and then, have you ever seen like a cicada that is at a wall? It doesn't know what the hell to do. This is new to them. They, they just kind of, I'm trying to figure out what to do with a wall. They have no idea what the fuck to do. It looks like a bartender uh, from, you know, at, at, a, at a bar, behind the bar, trying to change the channel, uh, digital cable. <laughs> they have no idea what to do, and they never pull it off, and they just give up. That's kind of what they do, or they put the cicadas on the ground, you know, like, you know, it's dead. So kind of nudge it a little bit, and then it freaks the fuck out like they woke up grandpa or something, you know? It's, it just freaks the fuck out. That's not relatable, I just think that's a funny thing that cicadas do. But, there are so many cicadas that there is a wasp that is actually named after its proclivity for, for seeking and destroying and killing cicadas. So I think called the cicada killing wasp. It finds, seeks cicadas, it gets in the first that fucking heads off and kills them. It's named after that. And that's not relatable to me. I don't live in fear of giant wasps seeking me out and destroying me. I can't speak for anybody in this room. If that's a fear you live with, giant wasps killing you, I am very sympathetic to that. But I don't have giant wasps I'm afraid of uh, finding and killing me. I, but I do have existential malaise that, that I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of existential malaise that, that coming and, uh, and burrowing in my brain and then, and then killing me prematurely. Uh, uh, speaking of existential malaise, I should get out of here. None of you people came here to see Ruben's laser and give a, give a do a set about bugs. You came here for pimp rock with these wonderful men in there. And I can't wait to introduce them to you, and uh, thank you all for showing up for this wonderful show. I don't know exactly where, but I know the proceeds, part of them, are going somewhere good. So you're all very good people, and so are they. So, they are homegrown, internationally known, and guaranteed to tickle your funny bone. This is <laughs> Pimp Rock!